We've all heard the stories, haven't we? We've all seen the patterns play out again and again. A nearly mythical leader, oftentimes the founder, creates a phenomenally innovative organization and then following a meteoric rise at some point, whether as a function of time or age or the demand for a more mature leader, they pass the baton on to the next generation of leaders. But when they do, a shift happens, and at first, the organization becomes more successful. There are better processes, efficiencies, and strategic planning that drive profitability and predictability through the roof. And all is well, but then one day we wake up and realize the organization is nothing but a shadow of its former self. Sure, it may be large and profitable and highly regarded, but those inside the organization know that it's lost its spark, and the organization begins its inevitable long, slow slide into irrelevancy. Now, this pattern is so normal that we've actually come to not only accept it, but expect it. Many great books are written on the topic. Among my favorites are The Innovator's Dilemma by Clayton Christensen, or The Founder's Mentality by Chris Zook and James Allen. There's also How the Mighty Have Fallen by Jim Collins, and even Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Now, there are so many valid reasons for why this happens, then there are plenty of myths that abound regarding the special powers of these visionary leaders and the abundance of strategies to counter or at least slow the slide. But to be honest, while they're helpful, most fail to address the one fundamental issue. And it is this, that these incredibly innovative leaders never actually build innovative organizations. So when they leave, which all must do eventually, they leave behind an organization that is known for and takes great confidence in their identity as a great innovator, but is little more than a museum trying to preserve the vision of their founder from a time long ago. Ironically, the more you attempt to preserve the innovation of the past, the more you sacrifice the innovation of the future. And the direct result is a premature death and decline of a once great organization. Okay, so what do you do? How do you truly build an innovative organization? One that has the capacity not only to outlive you, but to out-innovate you as well. How do you cultivate the next generation of talent and leadership to not only carry your vision forward, but to build it bigger than you could have ever imagined? Does it sound too good to be true or pie in the sky? Well, it isn't. In fact, it's precisely what you must do to build an organization that can thrive and enjoy predictable success for decades and even centuries to come instead of months and years after your departure. And personally, I believe it's the truest measure of a great innovator. Many can be innovative, but the best don't stop there. They build truly innovative organizations. Now, you may be thinking, that's great, but how do I do it? Well, at the risk of trivializing an incredibly important issue, there are five strategies for building an innovative organization. Now, to that point, let me add, creating an innovative organization is one of those endeavors in life that are truly simple to understand but difficult to do. But if you're willing to consistently execute these five strategies, you will find yourself the primary beneficiary of all that hard work. First, focus on institutionalizing innovation. Second, create a culture of innovation. Third, allocate resources to implement new and potentially bad ideas. Four, drive strategy that demands innovative action. And five, put it all together with a process that fosters failure. Now, in this video series, we'll dive into each strategy, starting with the next video on institutionalizing innovation in your organization. I'll see you there.